What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy, man? It's the Bronco at the Frog coming at you with another reaction video. Ever since I reacted to that, how good was the past 25 Ballon d'Or winners? The man Fabio Cannavaro just hopped out at me because he's a goddamn defender. The last defender to win it since that long ago. And one thing about it, that man is only 5'8". Also, Lissandro Martinez, shit, that's like me out there. Me out there out here D'ing boys up and winning Ballon d'Or to do so. So, we got us a video. I want to learn about his story. My boy, Ray Mark Football. I reacted to a video from him in a minute. Go subscribe to him. Drop him a subscription. If you've been watching me for a long time, you know Ray Mark Football. Before the video start, subscribe to my gaming channel, Lil Bronco. Subscribe to my backup channel for non-football related content. More Bronco. Follow me on Instagram. Twitter, TikTok, all the links down below. How a 5'8 hothead center back became the best player in the world. Let's see what goes down. Take a look at these guys. Fabio Grosso, 6'3, left back. Luca Toni, 6'4, forward. <laughs> and, and, and what's his name? He's smaller than that. Cannavaro. Gianluca Zabrota, 5'10. Right back. Fabio <laughs> oh, oh, Cannavaro. Oh, oh, <laughs> it's definitely chill, Ray Mar. Hey, chill on the short keys, man. Yeah, had to do us like that, man. I hate when boys be discriminated on people because it ain't height. We ain't choose how tall we was gonna be when we was born. That's all uh, uh, decided on our parents, our father and mother's genetics. Shout out boys like Fabio Canavero. Shout out boys like Jorge Campos. No matter what your height is, still go go out there and do your thing because of the heart and the determination. That's all it's about. Well, it ain't all it's about. But some people got so much heart and determination that they can overpower the things like height. Oh, hell no, man. <laughs> it's definitely unusual to see a shorter guy playing as a center back. And some of you might even say that for a coach to put him as Why that, that boy look like Chris Evans? Center back. I was just going to say, he look like somebody. Tell that me that boy don't look like Captain America. Like the actual Avengers Captain America, not Christian Pulisic. Damn. That's crazy right there. Let me find out Chris Evans got some uh, Italian. Well, he probably do got some Italian ancestry. You never know. But that's damn near a, doppel a doppelganger. Ain't that the word? Doppelganger? For a coach to put him as that is an incredibly foolish decision. But perhaps the more important thing that we should be asking is just how insanely good does this man have to okay, be to, to play that her. position at that size? But Cannavaro isn't just special because he's small. We're not talking about no Lissandro Martinez or Javier Mascherano. Who? No, there's levels to this. Because in the 90s to early 2000s, Italian defenders were the very best in the oh, world. Yeah. And right beside the legendary Paolo Maldini, who many regard as the greatest defender of all time. So who burst the, the greatest defenders now? So like he said, back in the 90s, the Italian defenders ran everything. Now, I can't even say that it's a country's group of people that just produce like, you know, dominant, dominant defenders like that, you know? Somebody let me know down in the comments. Because we talk about best defenders now. We got Big Verge, he's uh, Dutch. We got uh, uh, Rudiger, he's German. Militao, he's Brazilian. Like, you know, they from all over. It ain't just like no one specific country. I'm trying to think of a national team who has like the best defense. Somebody let me know down in the comments. It's not England, wrong to maybe? say that no, Fabio Cannavaro no. was the second best defender of all time. all time. In his prime, he was an absolute menace on the pitch. Even the fastest and best dribblers had to be at the very top of their game just to avoid him in open play. In oh. fact, the younger Cannavaro was even giving Ronaldo the phenomenon with all his size, speed, and a graceful touch. Oh, Dino, though. Time on the pitch. There's a reason why in his all-time starting 11, Ronaldo, rightfully so, shows respect to the undersized center back. All right, let's see how many of these people that I know. So, OG Naldo, you know, he always so loved to the newer generation. I always mess with him because he so loved the speed. Like, that was live. Then, like, a player on his caliber will really, like, do some shit like that. Like, invite speed to his house and show him around and let him hold. Let his crazy ass hold the Ballon d'Or. That just shows you how grounded, like, to, like, how grounded of a person that, uh, you know, OG Ronaldo Phenomeno is. He got his all time starting to live. Goalkeeper. Is that Buffoon? I think that's Buffoon right there. Back four, Roberto Carlos Cannavaro. I'm pretty sure that's Maldini. 
Um, I don't know this Brazilian dude, Brazilian bloke right here. Midfield, we got Zinedine Zidane. We got Diego Maradona. We got Pele midfield, midfield spot. Okay, gotta squeeze, gotta squeeze him in there somehow. Front three attackers. We got CR7 Cristiano Ronaldo. So we got himself at striker OG Ronaldo, and then we got Neil Messi at right wing. That front three uh, off top automatically go carry you past everything. But that defending that back line is kind of crazy. But you can tell he kind of he he had to try and force his hand and squeeze Pele in there by having that boy at, at, at that midfield spot. Because when he was younger, kind of always used to have a bit of a temper and extremely competitive nature. Short Ever since he was wrong. young, being nothing more than a ball boy for his hometown club of Napoli, he always wanted to step onto the pitch and make a name for himself. He got some but as big much as kind of always wanted to have a more ball dominant role or limelight position as a midfielder or forward, like some one day training, his coach would pull him to the side and say, "Fabio, I prefer you as a defender." Fabio, this would both confuse I, and this low key kind of sound disrespectful, bro. Let me run. As a midfielder or forward, Navarro wanted to have a more ball dominant role or limelight position as a midfielder or forward. One day in training, his coach would pull him to the side and say, Fabio, I prefer you as a defender. Yeah, that definitely sounds disrespectful right there. It's kind of like in, in with band. Well, y'all wouldn't get the reference, so I ain't gonna bring it up. But basically, everybody wanted to play snare drum. It's kind of like the hardest drum to play. If you're not good enough to play snare drum, we throw your ass on the bass. Get your ass on that bass drum, pick up some damn cymbals, and crash them hoes together. That's basically what Coach just told Mr. Fabio Cannavaro. He was like, bro, we don't need you with all these damn touches on the ball. We don't need you shooting at the damn goal. You get your ass on that back line, and we need you to defend. Damn, that's disrespectful, bro. Coach would have had me fucked up. His coach would pull him to the side <laughs> and say, They would say, Fabio, Fabio I prefer you, prefer as, you as a defender. defender. This would both confuse and anger the youngster. Oh, he yeah. knew he was already small, especially for his age. And because of the fact that he's 5'8", that's even more added disrespect. He say, bro, I don't even care if you're 5'8", bro. You get your ass to that back line. We don't need you taking no touches. Luckily for him, he would start using all that aggressiveness to find joy in giving 110% effort oh, yeah. into defending. And there's no better example of true aggression, skill, and perhaps even arrogance from the young Cannavaro than when he first moved to the Napoli men's squad. Because in his training debut with the first team, the young Cannavaro would straight dive bomb no other than the club superstar Diego, Diego Maradona. Maradona. In an incredibly physical but clean challenge. Yeah, he's like, That's like if a teenager moved up to Barca's men's team in the mid 2010s and decided to just tackle Lionel Messi as hard as possible, <laughs> which could have potentially yeah, injured him it's the in training. Thing. The entire squad was in utter disbelief, starting to press and scold the youngster for being so arrogant yep. and unnecessarily aggressive. But it was no other than Diego Maradona himself that defused the situation and said that it was okay, telling the youngster yeah. to keep on playing, playing your his way. way. He respected game, respect game. And they both short kings. It's like, but I like Fabio's mentality. A lot of people be starstruck. They be seeing Messi. Like when Messi came to the MLS, oh, it's Messi. Oh my gosh, can I get your autograph? Can I get they out here doing the grass or I'm out here doing the video? Oh my gosh, Messi! Can I get your jersey? Can we trade jerseys? Man, Fabio say, man, fuck that! I, I straight slide tackle his ass first play of the game to send a message on some Kobe Bryant shit. That's what Fabio just did to Diego Maradona. The young Canavaro was shocked just how the superstar was so humble. Look at him back there. Maradona for his boots, and ever since that day, deciding not to play with arrogance, but the channel that controlled aggression. From then on, Canavaro would start to gain a reputation, not only because of his unique size and position arrangement, but also because of his genuine skill. With the under-21 Italian like squad, he would help lift the 1994 under-21 UEFA Euros championship. Hey. But with Diego Maradona long gone from Napoli, as well as other factors like financial burden, the club had no choice but to salvage some financial assets, selling the young Cannavaro to Parma. Leaving his hometown Parma. club of Napoli might have been a little disappointing for Cannavaro. What country is Parma? It was Parma that he would really start to find success and too? recognition as a fierce. I don't defender. know why they sound this like a South also the American time club. that Cannavaro would first link up with Gianluigi Buffon. Yeah, despite South Parma failing either. to win any silverware in their first few years together, with Buffon at goal and Cannavaro just above him, Parma had created an incredibly solid for defense. Oh, so, too great! Despite Parma's lack of firepower on the attack, their backline and overall defense is what really solidified oh. their performances.
I just know that there was some terroristic football to watch. You got a great, that's some Atletico Madrid ball. You got a great ass defense, zero offense. I know them games was nil nil, one nil, all of that guy. I bet 80% of their games ended one nil or nil nil, boy. As the club would finish at least in the top five of Serie A in their first three seasons, while the young goalkeeper and center back duo would really begin to build a reputation well, for keeping one of the most secure goals in the league. Then in the under-21 European Championships in 1996, not only would Cannavaro help Italy secure back-to-back under-21 Euro trophies, this time he would also be named the player of the tournament. Hey. And for a defender getting acknowledged like that, can already tell you all you need to know that Cannavaro was a true defensive genius in the making. But when the world would really start noticing Cannavaro world Cup. was when he was called up to make his Italian men's team debut in the World Cup qualifiers against England. Because the young Cannavaro would completely lock up the English attack. <laughs> the likes of Andy Cole and Alan Shearer, some of the greatest Premier League goal scorers in history, England were getting absolutely handled by the 5 foot 8 I ain't center back. Say On paper, you'd expect them to destroy the undersized Cannavaro. But instead, Cannavaro would be the biggest factor in Italy maintaining a clean sheet as he completely clamped down on the English attack. The Italian defense back in those days were without a doubt the best in the world. And Cannavaro, already surprising every English football fan, would only contribute further to that reputation for many that more years so to come. Because now at the club level, Parma, with the help of Cannavaro, would start to win silverware. Parma would win the 1998-99 Coppa Italia and UEFA Cup or modern day Europa League. Right. Then to start off the next season, they would fend off Italian giants AC Milan. With all the firepower that they had in Shevchenko and George Weah. Thanks to a Shout monstrous George. effort by Cannavaro. Resulting in Parma lifting the 1999 Italian Super Cup. Because when it came to open play defense, you might even say that Cannavaro was better than Maldini. So back in the day, was the Super Cup like a Mickey George Mouse Wea. trophy? Thank like it is now. Well, I ain't gonna say it's a Mickey Mouse trophy, but people do. People don't really care about the Super Cup. Like With that. all the firepower that they had in Shevchenko and George but I feel Wea, like back in the thanks day, thanks to a monstrous effort did. by Cannavaro, resulting in Parma lifting the 1999 Ooh, Parma Italian was Super to be Cup. Reckoned. Because when it came to open play defense, you might even say that Cannavaro was better than Maldini. Sure, he was smaller and not as strong, but the shorter size meant a better center of gravity, which allowed him to leverage his size when battling it out with more physical forwards. So and being the, smaller is an advantage when it comes to defending because like he said low center of gravity now the weakness gonna be with headers like on corners they gonna be targeting your ass and a boy you that short and a man like erling how they walk up there he is ready to rub his nuts on top of your forehead unless you got hops like me somebody like me but everybody don't got hops like bronco you feel me so no mistake, Cannavaro was very strong for his size. He also had considerably more pace than Maldini. And for that inevitable moment that a defender does get big, having the additional agility and speed to help with the recovery can make all the difference in winning back the ball. Because when it came to his positional sense and spatial awareness, Cannavaro was a relentless hound. As his first option before even defending the players, he would do everything he could to try and prevent them from receiving the ball, the ball but also when he had to tackle, which he was known for doing incredibly well, whether it be to delete oh! the ball, but when he had to tackle, which he was known for doing incredibly well, Scloop! whether it be to delete I ain't the never ball seen a in a like one one situation, or as a backup and help defender. His slide Bro, when the last time y'all seen a tackle like this, or a successful tackle like this in real well, life? Whether in the modern day age, please tell me the last time somebody has seen a tackle like that, or stealing ball like that be to deny the ball in a one-on-one -on -one situation or as a backup and help defender. His, his slide tackles were cleanly accurate yet lethal. Plus, when Cannavaro decided to mark you, it wasn't gonna be a good day. His timing and challenges was so elite, he knew the exact moments where stripping the ball was optimal. Like how most poor defenders usually stick their foot out hey, only to get left behind. Cannavaro was patient and waited for that moment that usually happened right after the prison player shifted. So first, you can like tell he put his bottom First, he almost broke his leg. Look at his leg. Oh, oh, look at his leg. Baby. First, he almost broke his leg. He ain't feel that shit. I guess he usually stick their foot out only and to get left behind. He was Cannavaro him up was patient and waited for that moment put that usually happened right in the after. damn guillotine headlock. Hold on. Put that boy in the guillotine headlock while they still fight for the ball. Physical. 
usually happened right after an opposing player shifts his direction or does a skill. Of course, no defensive method is 100%, but it surely made his challenges a lot more successful. And without a doubt, his work rate in stamina was much higher than Maldini's, allowing him to keep coming at you all match long, yeah, so and forcing you to have to work your very hardest to get by past him. If Cannavaro was any taller, it's possible he could very well have been known as the greatest defender of all time. Because in regards to defense, Cannavaro uh, wasn't just out there playing clear. football. He was playing chess. But eventually, Cannavaro would soon be signed by Juventus. Juve. They would end up winning two Serie A titles together. His only Serie A titles during his entire time in Italy. But not long after, Juventus would be exposed in the Calciopoli scandals, Yo, which were basically a bunch of scandals involving Juventus' board and their pretty questionable relationships with the referees, resulting in more favorable results, which I guess is like what Barcelona is being heavily accused of doing in the 2010s. And this would be a stain on Cannavaro's legacy, since that was the only time he really found success in Serie A. Oh. And it didn't help that for the Italian team outside of the under-21s, Cannavaro wasn't finding much success from the country. In the 1998 World Cup, they lost to eventual champions France in a penalty shootout after a hard-fought battle, with Cannavaro even getting a cut in his forehead and having to play with a mask. Boy, what type of mask is that? And two years later, even getting a cut in his forehead. He said a cut on his forehead. Oh, he gonna put that up. <laughs> That is crazy. They got a damn knitted uh, wool mask they had back in the day. The reason why we don't see it today because this shit did not work. That did not protect them boys. That's why we got the real thick black mask now. Like, boy. A and having mask? to play with a mask. Then two years later in the 2000 Euros, Italy did manage to reach the finals, but they were once again matched up with a prime Zidane led France. Damn, France. Oh, Italy, ain't it? Two to one. Then in the 2002 World Cup, Italy would lose in an infamously controversial match against South Korea. Oh, yeah. It was after this that Maldini would retire from international Korea, football 2002. and Italy's captaincy would be passed down to Cannavaro. But finally, in 2006, Cannavaro would remind everyone why he was, without a doubt, one of the best defenders in history. In Italy, he would win back-to-back -back Serie A Defender of the Year Ooh. awards, while also being named the Serie A Footballer of the Year. Ooh. That's right, a defender actually winning the Player of the Year award in their league. Insanely rare. And a defender was number two, too. Player of the Year award Ugh. in their league. Insanely rare as Cannavaro was an absolute wall for Juventus, helping them win the 2005-2006 Serie A title. Sure, like I said, it would eventually be revoked because of the scandal, but with Cannavaro leading the defense, they would finish with 15 points higher Jeez. than second place Inter Milan, only getting scored on 24 times in the entire 38 match season. 24 times? You only scored on 24 times in 38 matches. Now this D! Hey, man, what's the team that came close to that in, in recent memory? 24 times and 38? So that means hypothetically it's like 14 games that you was not scored on. Hypothetically. Because one game, it could have been more than that because one game a team could have uh, got lucky and scored three or just had a day and scored like three or four on them or two, you know. So it could have been more than 14 games without of clean sheets. Season. Then that summer in the 2006 World Cup in Germany, he played all 690 minutes Damn. of Italy's campaign. And with him at the back line, not a single goal Woo! was conceded from open play. Just so defensively dominant that they would call him Il Muro di Berlino, Il Muro or the Berlin Bini. Wall in English, <laughs> as Italy would finally get rolled. Let's Berlino. go! Let's go, that nickname. They call that boy Il Muro di Berlino, which means. They called him the Berlin Wall. Why they call it the Berlin Wall though? I thought that was uh in Germany. There ain't no Italian wall they could have named him after. I guess, man. No. Or the ain't Berlin kind of wall culturally in English, as Italy would finally get revenge on their longtime French rivals and lift the 2006 World Cup. There you and go. with all the individual awards and team success, Cannavaro would lift the 2006 
Ballon d'Or. And some yep, people might see it as controversial. And well, we all know that the criteria isn't exactly stable. But well, it's they not. weren't gonna give it to a guy who headbutts someone in front of billions. Okay, now, 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 but, now, now. But, well, I did see somebody in the comments say the only reason that Cannavaro got that hoe is because it ain't had headbutted. And I ain't want the, the, the face of football to be a goddamn battering ram headbutter when stuff don't go your way or when somebody talking about your sister or whatever. But you gotta have a uh, hard stone skin, Zinedine. You feel me? But I know back like five minutes ago, I made a comment. It was like, damn. I know five minutes ago, I made a comment. They were saying that Zidane. Bro, these, these leaf blower motherfuckers getting up my nerve. They want to choose the leaf blow at any time. They, they could have leaf blew any time. Any time. But they want to do it now when Bronco recording. Like I was saying, Zinedine, I know y'all was on my head because I was like, damn, it seemed like France on Italy, don't it? But then this was the game where, where Zinedine headbutted them boys and they ended up winning. We're going to give it to a guy who headbutts someone in front of billions, like Zidane did. Plus, Ronaldinho underperformed in the World Cup. Thierry Henry lost two major finals with Arsenal. And Cannavaro was just overall better than Buffon. Aside from the Ballon d'Or, Cannavaro would be the only defender in history to have been named the FIFA World Player of the Year. He'd signed with Real Madrid right after the World Cup, helping them win two La Liga titles and one Spanish Super Cup before retiring a couple of seasons later. Sure, a lot of his career was spent yeah, in less successful clubs, with the, which is probably the why he doesn't have that much of a winning reputation. Outside of the 2000 clubs, which is probably why he doesn't have that much of a winning uh, reputation. Yeah. Why he say that? Super Cup before retiring a couple of seasons later. Sure, a lot of his career was spent in less successful clubs, which oh, is probably okay. why he doesn't yeah, have that much of a winning life. reputation outside of that the 2006 man. World Cup, especially with how dominant AC Milan were in Serie A, which only further overshadowed his less flashy abilities. But even from a purely individual level, you need less than one hand to count the amount of defenders that you can claim were better at defending than Fabio Cannavaro. And his bell on door is a reminder to defenders everywhere that although they might not be as appreciated, it's still possible to become the best in the world in what many would normally see as the most boring position. Hey, shout out to boy Fabio Cannavaro. And the only reason he's in this position because his coach was hating on him and, and threw him as a defender in the afterthought. Shout out for Fabio for locking in and dealing. Let this be a life lesson. Deal with the cards that you were dealt. And Sean, when it's your turn, to goddamn shine. Hey, Fabio Cannavaro, hand clap. Like he said, you need fewer than a hand to name how many defenders are better than uh, Fabio Cannavaro. Y'all let me know down in the comments who y'all think is better than him in uh, football history in terms of defending. And man, one in the batting door, man. Hey, I'm out.